In the depths of Afghanistan, Dr. Dilip Joseph had dedicated years of his life to altruistic missions. But fate had a different plan in store for him. In a chilling turn of events, he found himself abducted by the Taliban. Dr. Joseph was given a brief opportunity to contact his Kabul office. Unfortunately, time turned against him, and as the hours dragged on, the negotiations aimed at securing his release crumbled. On the fourth day of his captivity, the captors issued an order to disband, tearing apart the fragile bonds between Dr. Dilip and his fellow captives. Tears streamed down his face as he bid farewell to his companions, sensing that this might be their final heartbreaking encounter. In the suffocating darkness of his small, pitch-black room, despair engulfed him. But suddenly, amidst the silence, chaos erupted. The cacophony of barking dogs, bleeding sheep, and gunfire shattered the stillness. Then, a figure burst through the door, a Navy SEAL. The war had ravaged for over a decade in Afghanistan when Dilip Joseph, a compassionate doctor, who dedicated himself to serving the local communities through healthcare and training, embarked on his 10th mission. The American doctor had made numerous visits to Afghanistan, immersing himself in its culture. But everything would change on December 5, 2012. That day, Joseph and his two Afghan colleagues embarked on a routine trip from Kabul to a remote community center. Unbeknownst to them, danger lurked in the shadows. Descending a winding mountain road during their return to Kabul, their peaceful journey shattered when an armed man suddenly emerged. The vigilant driver swiftly braked as a warning shot pierced the air. To their astonishment, more armed individuals appeared, surrounding them. Dilip, an ethnic Indian whose appearance blended with that of the insurgents, was mistaken for a local. It was only when their belongings were scrutinized and his American passport was discovered that the situation dramatically escalated. Transported to a remote valley with their hands bound, Dilip and his colleagues embarked on an arduous nine-hour hike through rugged terrain. Amidst the fear that gnawed at their hearts, Dilip contemplated the gravity of their situation. As the sun descended, casting a dusky hue upon the landscape, the group arrived at a secluded shack. The kidnappers revealed their demands, a staggering $300,000 threatening to transport them to Pakistan should their desires go unmet. The hostages' lives hung in the balance. The U.S. military had a critical mission at hand, to locate and rescue Dr. Joseph from the clutches of his captors. The urgency was palpable, as intelligence reports indicated that time was running out. If immediate action wasn't taken, Dr. Joseph, along with his loyal driver and Afghan interpreter, could either be relocated to an unknown location or worse. The stakes were incredibly high, and action was desperately needed before the dawn of December 9th, or else the captives would face the unthinkable. Meanwhile, the doctor was being held in a small, cramped room in a desolate building. This bleak structure stood in a remote area, nestled next to a formidable mountain in the Kargai district of Lakman province, Afghanistan. It was here that an elite handful of specialized elements had to make their move, risking everything to save a life. It was a task for the Navy SEALs. The rescue plan was meticulously crafted with one goal in mind, a successful extraction of the hostage. The strategy was clear. The rescue team would breach the room where the guards were stationed, firmly believing that Dr. Joseph was hidden within. But their success hinged upon three crucial elements, surprise, speed, and unyielding aggression. They had to forego personal safety for the sake of swift action, knowing that their sacrifice was vital for the mission's triumph. Each member of the rescue force volunteered willingly, fully aware of the dangers that lay ahead. They comprehended the risks involved and embraced their roles with unwavering determination. Once the mission had been approved by the commander of all international security assistance forces in Afghanistan, the rescue force set off from their forward operating base. The team was inserted into the district by helicopter, but that only took them part of the way to their objective. The SEAL's journey was arduous, traversing treacherous trails and navigating challenging terrain. For endless hours, they patrolled the area, but they pressed on relentlessly, knowing that salvation was within their reach. 
Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, the rescue force reached their destination, the target compound. As aerial surveillance relayed intelligence of an alert guard patrolling the target compound, Chief Petty Officer Chekwe took charge, skillfully guiding the primary assault force toward the objective. He maneuvered his team closer to the target building with precision and expertise, aware of the imminent danger that awaited them. Despite the engulfing dark, a guard stationed in the courtyard spotted the approaching rescue force and swiftly vanished into the safety of the building. It became clear that the enemy had been alerted and the life of the hostage hung in the balance. Without a moment's hesitation, Chief Petty Officer Chekwe instinctively pursued, confronting a guard who peeked out from a doorway. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Chekwe's resolve remained unshaken. He sprinted towards the door and swiftly breached it. Inside the shack, Joseph had been initially permitted to contact his Kabul office to report the kidnapping and relay the demands. However, as the hours stretched, cellular connectivity vanished. With no settlement in view, hope was quickly fading away. Suddenly, a man stormed through the door, a Navy SEAL, a beacon of rescue, the valiant SEAL member, Petty Officer First Class Nicholas Chekwe. Amidst the chaos, other members of the elite SEAL team rallied, their voices reaching Joseph. Right behind the lead assaulter, Chief Edward C. Byers and his team sprinted to the door. As the primary breacher, Byers stood in the doorway, in a vulnerable position, exposed to enemy fire. Undaunted, he pushed through six layers of blankets that fortified the Afghan threshold, securely fastened to the ceiling and walls. But the feeble barriers were no match for his resolute will. With mighty strength, Byers tore through the fabric. Yet, as fate would have it, Chekwe encountered the wrath of the enemy's AK-47. Bullets pierced the air, claiming their mark with ruthless precision. Undeterred by the danger that loomed within, Chief Byers pressed forward, confronting a sentinel who brandished an AK-47 aimed directly at his chest. Byers was just engaging the first guard when another man darted toward the corner of the room. The chief could not distinguish if the person was the hostage scrambling away or an enemy reaching for an AK-47 lying in the corner. Instinctively, Byers tackled the unknown male and seized control of him. While in hand-to-hand -hand combat, Chief Byers maintained control with one hand. Simultaneously, he adjusted the focus of his night vision goggles with the other. Once focused, he recognized that the man was indeed not the hostage, and thus confronted the struggling armed guard. By then, other team members inside the room were calling Dr. Joseph to identify himself. Chief Byers heard an unknown voice speaking in English coming from his right side. Immediately, he leapt across the room and flung his body on top of the American hostage without concern for his own safety, shielding Joseph from the never-ending rounds fired across the room. Almost simultaneously, Byers spotted another enemy fighter directly behind Dr. Joseph. Without failing to cover the hostage with his body, Byers pinned the enemy to the wall, his hand around the enemy's throat. Unable to fire any effective shot at his opponent, Byers restrained the kidnapper just long enough for his teammate to fire precision shots. The final threat within the room was subdued. It was then that the intensity of the ordeal was extinguished, but the operation was not over. Chief Byers confirmed that Dr. Joseph was able to move. He helped the doctor stand up, calmed him down, and let him know he was safe with the American forces. At last, he was moved to the helicopter landing zone. Meanwhile, Byers, a certified paramedic, had more pressing matters to attend to. Alongside an 18D medic, he assisted with medical aid to an urgent patient. One of the SEALs had been gravely injured. Byers and his team performed CPR during the 40-minute flight to Bagram Airfield. Tragically, he had sustained mortal wounds. The fallen hero, Petty Officer Nicholas Chekwe, aged only 28, had paid the ultimate price for Joseph's freedom. However, his sacrifice proved pivotal, for it ensured the rescue of the American hostage and the ultimate success of the mission. Chekwe's commitment and audacious bravery embodied the essence of a true hero, for which he was bestowed a posthumous Navy Cross. In addition, Chief Byers was awarded the much-deserved Medal of Honor for his selfless actions in the face of danger. Days later, 
Joseph returned home to his family in Colorado, enveloped in a wave of gratitude for the soldier's heroism and the bravery of all those involved in his daring rescue.